children's moment. I am so excited for today. Do you guys want to see what I got in my Easter egg basket? I cannot wait to show you. Well, I got this ball that I can play with in the pool. I got this cute little stuffed animal. It's a little owl. I got this sand that I can play with and build things with. 
and I got my favorite candy, Reese's Eggs, which in my opinion is the best Reese's. I think it has the best chocolate to peanut butter ratio. So those are all the things I got today for Easter. What did you guys get? Wait, you don't think it's Easter today? Hmm, let's check my calendar. Oh, children, this is really awkward. Today is not Easter. Easter is a very special day that we celebrate in the church when God resurrected Jesus. So today might not be that day, but every Sunday is a mini celebration of that day. So today we still celebrate all the things that God has done. Today, Pastor Mary is going to be talking to us about traditions. We have a lot of different traditions in our church. Traditions are things that have been passed down from generation to generation. So the way we do communion is a tradition. Our order of worship is a tradition. Uh, theological things that we believe about God are a tradition. Hmm. What are some traditions in your family? Maybe you guys do something special for Easter. I would love to hear what you guys do that's a tradition in your family. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for traditions and thank you for our time together. We are so grateful we get to celebrate you today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. One more thing before we go. Get really close to your screen and put your forehead or your hand up. You are a blessing. Thank you for being with me today. Let us pray. Alleluia. Alleluia. Loving and merciful God, you are worthy of all of our praise, all of our singing, all of our adoration. And we give you thanks for another day, for another day of life, for another breath, and for another opportunity to gather together even through virtual means and to know that we are not alone. That not only are you with us, but we are connected through bonds that span time and space. So thank you, Spirit of the living God, for being with us in this very moment, for being as near to us as our very breath. And God, with this day, we, as always, come with mixed emotions. We come, O oh God, with praises of thanksgiving for provision, for miracles in our midst, for the gifts of technology, for friends who check in and who love us. We give thanks for the, the truth of your unending love and grace for our church family and God for so many other blessings. We also, God, are a people who are in desperate need, <laughs> in desperate need of your presence, of your care, of more extravagant miracles in our lives and in our church, in our country and in our world. And so, God, we come to you with all of these and we're glad that we can trust you with them. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for this another week or a first week of school. 
God, we need you to protect our teachers, to protect our students, to offer peace, to, um, to give perseverance and endurance, to be at work even in technology, God. We're scared, we're anxious, we're joyful, we're excited. Be with us in all of those emotions. Be with parents and caregivers, be with school workers, and be with our students, oh God. We pray for all in the world who are in the midst of extra challenging circumstances. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God, we also have the fears and destructions of storms and we cry for your mercy for those in their paths, for those who are affected. And we pray that we may be the people who send help, who pray and act. God, be with your people in the midst of job loss, in the midst of fears of job loss. Be with your people, oh God, in the midst of depression, in the midst of grief. And be with your people, oh God, to inspire us to live out as Jesus in all that we do and say in our homes and in our communities and in the world. So God, move in our midst. Speak words to us that you long for us to hear. Open our ears and our hearts to your word and help us to respond and say, here I am, oh God, your church is listening. So thank you, God, for this day, for your presence, for your grace. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God, the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, church. I am with you today from a different location uh, that I wanted to start our new series, God Unbound, in this place. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because this place is really, really special to me. This is, in the background, is an old United Methodist Church, Shingle Creek United Methodist Church. It's the oldest incorporated church in Osceola County. It was incorporated somewhere in the early 1800s. And it was definitely a place where people could find God. It has been a staple in this community for hundreds of years. But in 2017, this church closed. And it looked like all was lost. It had been a church very much steeped in tradition. It met every Sunday, every Wednesday night, had a United Methodist pastor appointed here. And yet, as the community around it changed, its population and folks who came to visit it just continued to dwindle and dwindle until finally it was worshiping somewhere about seven to 10 people every Sunday. But the folks who were here were dedicated and they cared deeply for their church. But they also knew that what was happening in their church wasn't sustainable for the long term. And so in partnership with the Community Hope Center, the United Methodist Church donated this property so that we could do our ministry here. I have such plans and visions of what I think God wants to do here at Shingle Creek. 
I believe that it's always meant to be a worship space. It's so quiet, even though the corridor is literally half a mile down the road. It's peaceful, it's serene. And when I look at it, I look at it as a place where God has always been. Where God has been in a building and where God has been outside of a building. Our series right now, God Unbound, takes us through the book of Galatians with Elaine Heath, who is a former dean from Duke University. She's very well known. I've heard her speak many times. She's wonderful. Her books are great. And she talks about how, as she was reading through the book of Galatians, Paul is talking to the book, to, talking to the people of Galatia, and she realizes that Paul is talking to some people who might be considered insiders people who have started their traditions of their church, who are doing things the way that they think that they should be done, and then realize that some of the ways that they're putting practices in place is keeping people out. And Paul, who grew up in the Jewish tradition, who was a Pharisee, recognizes something that he has seen before. He has seen the same type of legalism that happened with the Pharisees and the Sadducees that caused persecution of Christians, that caused people to not have a connection with God, starting to trickle into the Christian church. And so he calls out to the folks in Galatia and says to them, listen, the God who has called me, it's not a man who has called me to do this, but Jesus himself who did this. And Jesus was not inside the traditions of the church. Elaine Heath explains it as Jesus is the tradition behind the tradition. And so you have this journey of Paul trying to explain to a people that yes, there are rules and regulations and there is place for doing things the quote right way. But oftentimes Jesus brings us to a place where we don't necessarily do things the way they've always been done. Which I think is really important to us right now in this time. Here we are, not being able to do church the way that we've always wanted to do it. We have wanted to do church inside a building because that is where we've always done it. But God is not bound to a building. And so we are learning together how we can find ways to get outside of our tradition of going to church every Sunday morning, being in a building, doing what we've always done, and seeing where can we find God in the outside. Elaine, he talks a lot about how God is present to her and she learns a lot in this book around people who are outsiders, people who see things differently, people who look at tradition and say that is fine and I think there may be other ways we can do this work. There are other ways to build the kingdom of God. And so she is challenged by the book of Galatians because it helps her to see that maybe the things that she's been holding on to, the traditions that she thought only worked with her experience of church. Maybe we're keeping other people from experiencing an unbound God. I think that's a challenge for us as well. We are in such a weird and unique space when it comes to what the world looks like right now. And the ability for us to worship God and to do what we've always done is over. We don't have that opportunity anymore. So we have to then work within ourselves to figure out what is our next step? What is it that God wants for us? I think that God wants us to recognize where God is already working and how we can be a part of that work. You know, when I was walking through kind of how I was gonna start this series and everything that Pastor Esther is gonna say in the the next weeks to kind of clarify this theme even stronger than I'm gonna say, I thought about how personally I feel so disconnected because I as well really love the local church. 
I love being with my church family. I love singing. I miss it so much. I miss that community worship space. But also, I have had the unique opportunity of being able to see God outside of those spaces. When I first started the Community Hope Center, I asked for this land that I'm sitting on from the district. And they told me no. They said that that's not something that they would do, um, that it was a pipe dream, that just, you know, this church is gonna continue on forever and people are gonna keep it funded and they're not interested in closing this church and doing something different. But God kept pushing on my heart and kept saying, no, that property is part of your calling. That property is part of what the Community Hope Center is. And I am an unbound God. I am a God who sees worship differently than what is happening in that space right now. The people who are there love me, but also they're missing out on how they're stuck inside a building. And so through prayer and partnership and God's continuous leaning, this property belongs to the Community Hope Center. And it is my dream and my vision, I think that God has put on it to put housing here. And yet there's a pandemic and I can't raise any money and I can't build any housing right now. And I have to challenge myself to that tradition Okay, God, if that is not where you are in this space, then what is next? But I think about what's actually happening in that sanctuary right now. If I took you inside, you would see that there are bags and bags of pre-prepped food. And that every Wednesday morning, people show up to this space. They line their cars up and down this road and we safely and efficiently deliver food for people who are food insecure up to a thousand heartbeats a week. That to me is an unbound God. I would have never imagined that we would be in a place that our community would be so hungry that we would be giving out pounds and pounds of food and yet here we are because we're listening to what God is leaning. We would have never been able to do this without this property. The fact that we have all this space that cars can line up, that we can do it so safely and efficiently in a pandemic, we would have never been able to do that on our other property. We were able to do it because we were here, because God knew what was to come. And I believe that that's the story of an unbound God. That's the way that we continue to worship God and to love God in spite of everything that's happening in our world. There is a lot of brokenness right now. But an unbound God can go past all of it. A God who is outside our church buildings a God who is outside our traditions or the way that we think things have always been done, a God outside of our politics, a God outside of anything that we are grasping and holding onto and saying, no, it has to be this way. That's what Paul did. That's why Paul was persecuting Christians because he believed in a God that only said there was one way. But yet, Jesus shows up to him and he says, there is more than one way. There is more hope and joy and things that you are missing because you are holding on to something that is no longer from me. God wants us to let go and to have the freedom to seek him on our own road to Damascus to let Jesus stand in front of us and to say, it's okay that you went that way, but now, now's the time to get unbound. 
now's the time to look around you and to see, okay, what is the next step? What is the next way? And I think there are so many opportunities for that. There is opportunities to serve outside of our church community like we do at the Hope Center. That's an easy one for me to say because that's my life. But I think about other folks right now who are tied down with homeschooling, who are stuck in a cycle, who feel like that they can't do anything extra for God right now. What if you looked at what was happening in your life and reframed that as God being unbound for you? What if you considered the homeschooling of your children an opportunity to serve the least of these? What if the way that you're serving your community as a doctor or nurse or any other kind of service as a way to see it to be an unbound person for God? What if God is already working outside of the walls and all he's waiting for is for us to stop and to look around and ask God what's next? And so over the next few weeks, we're going to explore that even more. We're going to talk about how we step out in faith, how we believe that God is working right now, that God has something in store for us, a spring of life that we have never imagined. That even when everything points one way, God says, no, we're gonna go this way. And so that is our prayer today. That is where we walk through this journey together, seeking, looking, and listening to an unbound God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. At this time, we have the opportunity to th give thanks to God, give thanks to God for this word that has been shared and for all of the ways that God is present through the offering of our gifts and tithes. These offerings and tithes are critical to the ministry of this church, and so we're thankful for the ways that we are able to give. You can give in a variety of ways. You can mail your check, you can give through the app, or you can give online. Will you pray with me for these gifts now offered to God? Loving God, everything that we have comes from you. And so at this time, we give back to you what is yours and pray that you bless it, that you use it for the growing of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, and that you be glorified through the mission of this church and all we do and all the ways that we love. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, we now reach the moment in our service where we are invited to participate together in the Lord's table. We like to remind ourselves that this is Jesus' table and he invites all who would come and be nourished. So if you don't have um, bread or crackers or water or juice, we invite you to go grab them now um, and know that you are welcome at this feast. During this time, we remember when Jesus gathered together with his friends on the night in which he was going to be betrayed. That day he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and offered it to his friends who were gathered with him. And said, this is my body. Take, eat, and as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. After the supper was over, he took the cup and once again gave thanks and offered it to them and said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as we participate in this meal, we proclaim a reality that is beyond what we can see, a truth that we believe 
that even though we are not together in body, at this table, we are together in spirit. Not only with Jesus, not only with our church, but with all persons who have gone before and who are yet to come, who are part of this communion of people who long to follow after Jesus. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the joy of this feast. We come recognizing that um, we have not done anything to deserve it. That in fact, we have caused harm to ourselves. We have caused harm to our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. And so God, this table reminds us to reorient ourselves and our lives to seek your forgiveness. And so God, forgive us. Thank you for being a redeeming God. Thank you for offering your grace and your forgiveness in these elements. Help us to live intentionally, bringing your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and following your path, even when it costs us. Pour out your spirit on us and pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by your blood and by your spirit make us one, one with you, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world as we proclaim the good news of your kingdom, of your liberation, of your justice. We love you and thank you and pray in Jesus name. Amen. As always, we invite you, if you are alone, to serve yourself, if you are with others, to serve one another. And this is the body and blood of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. Wait, me. 
keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are playmaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are playmaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Throughout this series, we want to leave you each week with a reflection question a way for us to connect together in community through taking this reflection question and talking about it with our church family together through emailing one another, texting one another, calling each other, uh, even in the chat box below this Facebook post. But somehow, some way, connect with someone from our church and reflect on what it means for us to reimagine church right now and to worship an unbound God. The question that I would love for you to think about within that space is where is God already at work and how can you join God there? We invite you to step into this space with us as we journey together to reimagine church and to worship this unbound God. Hear this benediction. Gracious and holy God, be with each of us as we follow your will and your way to worship you within walls or outside of them, God. Wherever you are, God, let us be there as well and let us find you and work to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Amen. There are great things happening every week at Spring of Life. And if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you're signed up for our weekly e-newsletter. This is where you can find church updates, events, and find out all the ways we're serving our community. If you have a prayer request, a need, or if you're new and want to be connected to our church, we invite you to fill out a connect card and you can find the link in this video description. Are you looking for a safe way to serve in our community? There are a variety of opportunities with the Community Hope Center as well as our very own Early Learning Center. The Community Hope Center is in need of volunteers to help with food sorting and distribution. And if you're unable to volunteer, they are also collecting spaghetti and canned fruit and vegetables. Our ELC is looking for donations of cleaning supplies and we're also collecting notes of encouragement and prayers for our teachers. 
For more information about these opportunities to serve, make sure to check out our e-newsletter. Thank you to all who came out last Saturday for our drive-in back-to-school blessing, and a special thanks to our volunteers who made it happen. It was great to see you all. Make sure to stay tuned for more events like this in the future. And again, the best way to find out about events is in our weekly e-newsletter. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure to check out the link in this video description. And whether you're worshiping with us on Facebook, Vimeo, YouTube, or IGTV, we would love to know you were with us. So give us a like or a quick hello in the comment section to let us know you're watching.